Understanding NBT tags is an important step to getting better at command blocks. They let you see a lot of information about entities, blocks, and items. You can use them in selectors, and you can also use them to modify the data of these blocks, entities, and items. Everything from what game mode a player is in, to what enchantments an item has, to the motion of an entity, it's all stored as NBT tags. In this video, I'm going to briefly explain how to start familiarizing yourself with NBT tags, and how to find specific data using NBT paths. So the first step towards this is learning how to use the slash data command to find what data your target has. If we do slash data get entity at s, it'll show us all the NVT data that we have on our player entity. If you're not familiar with all these different tags, it can be a bit overwhelming because it's a bit of a mess, but it gives you a good idea of what data we have access to. So here you can see my XP level, what my selected item slot is, and even what dimension I'm in. To find the data of a specific entity, you just have to change the selector in the command, and then it'll give you all the data for that entity. An important note is that the command only lets you target one entity at a time, so you do have to use the limit uh, selector if you are using at either at A or at E. As you can see, we can also get the data for certain blocks. This only works for some blocks though, because not all of them have data that's worth showing. If you are unfamiliar with NBT tags, I highly recommend that you play around with this command a bit, targeting different entities and blocks, just to kind of get used to what tags there are and what you have to play with. So let's move on to path formatting. When you're using NBT tags in selectors or using the summon, give, or set block commands, the formatting for the NBT paths is exactly as you see it here. If you're using the slash data command, however, the path formatting is a little bit different. So as you can see, when I use the slash data command to get my own NBT tags, you'll see that we have all this data that we might not necessarily need. There is a way to only get specific data though. Let's start with an easy one. Let's say I want to find out what a player's XP level is. As you can see, the NBT tag for this is called XP level. So if we type slash data get entity at S and then XP level, you'll see that it only gives us that specific piece of information. As you can see here, our XP level, it says it's zero. And by using this command, it's literally just outputted the number zero. It's important to note as well that when you're formatting these paths, the tags are case sensitive. So you do have to pay attention to that. That's the very basic path format and you can use this for pretty much all of them. Uh, so if we try and get dimension, if I can spell, there you go. And again, it outputs zero um, or selected item slot. That should give us a three. And there you go, and it gives us a three. Now let's move on to the next step. This next step is formatting the paths for sub tags. And for this, I'm gonna use an item entity. So I've got a diamond helmet here with protection four on it. If I throw this on the ground, it turns into an entity. That means I can target it with the slash data command. So if we do slash data get entity at E, uh, limit equals one, type equals item, and sort it by the nearest, just in case there's any nearby um, items, then we get all the data for the helmet item. So as you can see, we have a bunch of different tags again. We have the health, the dimension, uh, whether or not it's on the ground, and so on. The one that we're interested in, though, is the item tag. As you can see, it opens up a squiggly bracket here, which then closes all the way down here. So from here, all the way down this line and this one down to here, this is all the item, the item tag. Now you'll see within these squiggly brackets, we actually have another one called tag, which opens another set of brackets. And this one has another group of sub tags. We have repair cost, damage, and enchantment. Enchantments then opens a list, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's say we only want to find out what enchantments are on this item. How do we format the path so that we only get the enchantments? So you might guess that the best way to do this would be to do the same command and then just type in the name of the tag. So that'll be enchantments. But as you can see, it says found no elements matching enchantments. This is because enchantments belongs to the tag tag and the tag, oh God, I hate saying it like that, but the tag tag belongs to the item tag. So we've got to start with the item tag. So if we find out what NBT data is stored on the item tag, so now we've got it narrowed down to ID, count, and the tag, which obviously has its own subgroup. So if we only want to find out one of those tags then, so in this case the tag tag, then we put a point after the item and then put tag in. And as you can see now, we've narrowed it down even more. Now we've just got repair cost, damage, and enchantments. Now if we do this again and just put enchantments after it, so dot and then enchantments, there we go. Now we've only got the enchantments. It's level four and the idea is protection. Now let's talk about list tags. So enchantments is actually a list tag, but uh, as a demonstration, I'm just gonna use the inventory because it's a lot easier. So I've just put a bunch of different items in my inventory. If I do slash data get entity at S and then inventory, then you'll see that it gives us all of the data for my inventory. 
What you'll notice is that this opens with square brackets, so it starts here with a square bracket and it ends here. This shows that it's a list. Within these square brackets, we have a list of items all defined by these squiggly brackets, so this one starts here and ends here, and they're all separated with a comma. As you can see, we've got five items in our inventory, and because of this, we also have five items on the list. So we have cobblestone, coal, diamond axe, a minecart, and a torch. Let's say we only want the data for one of these listed items. The way we do this is we do the same command again and put square brackets at the end of the tag and put a number in there. So I'm going to put the number 3 in. As you can see, it gives us the data for the item that is number 3 on that list. Another important thing to note here is that all lists start at 0. So the first object on the list is number 0, and the second number is number 1, the third number is number 2, and so on. That particular path format is mostly useful for the motion tag or the position tag, because they're lists with a set number of items in them, so you can always find out exactly what you want to just using those, that, uh, that format. If you're looking for items in someone's inventory though, you'll probably want to find it depending on the slot, the item ID, or another tag. To do this we do something similar, but instead of putting a number in the square bracket, we put a pair of squiggly brackets. So if we want to find out what item is in the first slot of my hotbar, we would type slash data get entity at s inventory, uh, put the square brackets and the squiggly brackets, and then we put slot 0b. So that's the format for that exact slot. So as you can see here, we've got slot 1b, slot 3b, slot 4b, and then now we've got slot 0b because that's where the inventory list starts. So if we type that, we get the exact data for that slot. Um, and if I move the apple, you'll see that it then says no elements matching inventory slot 0b, and that's because there is no data for slot 0b. Understanding MBT tags and the paths used to identify them is a really important step in learning how to use command blocks. It opens up so many possibilities and makes you so much more aware of what's going on. This has just been a simple explanation, but I hope you learned something and have a good day.